Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the 2016 Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch CK2998 limited edition of 2,998 pieces. You can see this whimsical historic tribute Omega Speedmaster on our website. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you enjoy our videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen, yep that one up there in the right hand corner, to see our full sales listing for this watch with accessories included, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch CK2998. Now honestly I overstep a bit because strictly speaking this watch is not a moon watch rather it is a space watch a tribute to the 1962 flight of NASA mission Sigma 7 with Wally Shira wearing his Omega Speedmaster CK2998 that was actually his personal watch as the Speedmaster then was not yet part of the NASA Akeep. Now the watch on my wrist came out at Basel World 2016 as a tribute to that famous timepiece also known as the first Omega in space. And so you can see that this watch does borrow the case proportions and outright dimensions from the 2012 commemorative First Omega in Space numbered edition. However, unlike that one, this one is less literal, more imaginative in its presentation, upscale in its detailing fit and finish, and perhaps a little bit more fun-loving in its overall ambiance. Now the watch is 39.7 millimeters across the round of the case, not inclusive of chronograph crowns or the primary winding and setting crown. Now you'll also notice that the case itself is symmetrical. There is no crown guard nor there are pusher guards on the flanks. So this is the pre-professional case profile pre-1965 as would have been seen on Wally Shearer's own watch. Now another important distinction between this special edition and the 2012 is that this one is a limited edition whereas 2012 was a numbered but not limited edition. You'll note it has a squat and rather fat profile. The watch is actually a fairly chunky 14.5 millimeters thick, but you'll note, as with most Speedmasters, it does have the outward cantilevered tachymetric scale bezel, so it will get hung up on very tight sleeves. It also has a wonderfully historically evocative oversized domed sapphire. These are expensive to make in sapphire. With that particular shape, it recalls the plexiglass of the original and the hesalite of the current Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch, but it's one more upscale measure of fit, finish, and materials that sets this watch apart from the traditional Moonwatch. The crystal is sapphire. From lug to lug, the watch is 47 millimeters, which means it's wearable on a wide variety of wrists. Mine being 16 centimeters in circumference, I believe this watch is wearable down to 14 centimeters in circumference with security and a good sense of proportion. Now it has a substantial feel to it and a high grade strap. Rectangular scale, dark blue, contrasting stitch, alligator leather. You can see it's bolstered down the center, folded at the edge, and on the underside a very supple black calfskin. You also note it has a traditional low profile 60s style pin buckle and the watch has a combination of straighter and less dramatically formed lugs along with contrasting metal finish. You'll note polished on the hoods and the bevels, satin finished on the flank. The lugs are straighter and more severely cut than the more dramatically blended lugs of the asymmetrical professional style case that you see on the standard moon watch. This is designed to evoke the look of the CK2998, which was actually the second ever Omega Speedmaster reference. The first came out in 1957, the 2998 came out in 59. Now moving inward, you can see the tachymetric scale bezel has been upgraded. From anodized aluminum on the standard watch, it's now virtually scratch-proof blue ceramic and it's fully luminescent, meaning the entire tachymetric scale glows at night with superluminova. Now if the watch borrows its case size and profile from the 2012 First Omega in space, the dial is inherited from the Sedna Gold version of that watch, meaning it has a very highly pronounced seconds and minutes scale that's actually stepped down on a different plane from the center dial. You'll also note the use of alpha hands throughout another historic tribute and the evocative period inspired lollipop style chronograph seconds hand. Now the watch of course is luminescent at night. It has super luminova, not vintage tritium, so you can see this one in low or no light conditions as you should with every proper sports watch. The blue accents are beautifully rendered with a gloss richness to them that really sets this watch apart 
a historic tribute, not a historic re-edition or reproduction. The watch has a persona and a personality that is all its own. On the back, you can see the famed hippocampus. Why? Because as originally issued in the 1950s, the Speedmaster, being a water-resistant watch that wasn't universal at the time, even at Omega, was considered to be part of the Seamaster family. Now, you can see individually numbered in series, the watch features the famed Omega Caliber 1861 as used in today's moon watch, still issued by NASA, still used for extravehicular activity. It's an 18 joule manual wind chronograph that's a pleasure to wind. It is a cam operated chronograph with a lateral clutch, a 48 hour power reserve, and a stately and historically correct 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. It also enjoys a fairly robust 5 ATM water resistance, fairly robust for a flight inspired timepiece. You can see this somewhat whimsical, hugely charismatic, Omega CK2998 Special Edition of 2,998 pieces on our website. <music>